What's up everybody? It's a new week. Thanks for joining. I'm headed to the East Coast. I'm headed to Baltimore, Maryland to work with one of our partners called Earl Beck Gases and Technologies so I can show you what they're all about with people, products, uh, training, their training centers, uh, so you can see what all their customer experience is all about. So I'm going to be doing that this week. You know what's really disappointing? Waking up to snow, especially when there's two days left until spring. Me, the kids, and the family are ready to get outside and play around or more like do yard work. But uh, yard work. But can't wait for it. Check that out. I got all the clothes hanging there. Put them in the washing machine and ran out of time. So hopefully they can dry before I put them in my bag back here. See my bag? There's my bag. You know, traveling, it's fun. You know, you, can, you have some perks. You get to see, meet some cool people, see some cool places. But one of the hardest things is leaving my kids. And, you know, days like today, you know, make up for it. You know, when you're, when you're gone from your kids, you got to listen to this. This is really cool. This is a highlight. This is a highlight of my Monday. Uh, I was invited to be on Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. So listen to this. This is cool. Hey, thanks for listening Listen. to the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. I'm Roy Crum, running here with Jody Collier. Hello. And Jonathan Lewis. Hello, everyone. Our special guest that we have today is Chris Blevin, and he works with no Proteus. Way. He's a sales manager. And one thing I really like about Chris is he's actually a welder, too. So we wanted to get him on a here welder. and hear his backstory. Check that out. See where the conversation goes. Really cool. All my traveling, all the hard work pays off. So traveling this week, this this kind of thing makes up for it. All the hard work. But uh, I'm gonna put the description down below in this video so you can check out the podcast and give me a like button. Let's get moving. This week's gonna be awesome. See so you guys. I made it to Baltimore, and I have somebody special picking me up. It is Alta. Hi, Brad. What's going on? Andrew Hess and Andrew works for Earl Beck Gases and Technologies. You see this lovely gas cylinder here? We had to have it in the back because we need to represent Earl Beck. But uh, Andrew, how long have you been with uh, Earl Beck? Uh, since January 2012. January 2012, what is it, 2019? Yeah, seven years. A little yeah. while now. Yeah. So earlier in the video, I walked you through all their store locations. It's a special day, once again, because it's always a special day. And if you follow me on YouTube, or if you're just now watching, hit the subscribe button. But I try to bring my audience with me with what I do with work on a daily basis. And most of the time I'm working with the Fronius Partners. And today we're in York, Pennsylvania, and we're working with one of our partners called Earl Beck Gases and Technologies. So Earl Beck, they got four store locations family owned company. The cool part about Earl Beck is a majority of their sales staff, including the owner and the third generation, they're all CWIs. What is a CWI? It's a certified welding inspector. So if you think about it, the outside sales reps, the owners all have CWIs. So what kind of benefits can they bring you as a customer? And that's one of the important things about our partners is bringing some type of value when they walk in to your site or uh, your manufacturing facility. But check out this demo trailer. What they do with this is they bring it on site. So let's say you're working construction and you want to certify your welders on the site versus like bringing them into a training center. Then come right to your site, certify your welders and train them on the welding equipment you use out in the field. So let's take a look inside the store to see what they have to offer here in York, and then maybe we'll check out their headquarters later. So when in Maryland, what do you do? You, you grab Town. Yeah, you gotta go to Crab Town, but you gotta have you gotta have an Alta that takes you to this place right here. Supposedly they have a what old school arcade? Yeah, classic arcade. Yeah, they have an old school arcade in here. She quarters. brought her quarters. See that? 
I don't even have to pay for anything, <laughs> which is, which is kind of cool. And I get to eat crab, so I'm happy. And I don't know where I'm walking. But let's see what's in here. Here's the menu, and all I wanted was this right here. X Crabaganza, and they are out. Ooh. So she's gonna bring us focus. She's gonna bring us some crabs, and we'll see how big these things are. Here she comes. Dun, dun, dun. She's a little cutie. There it is. <laughs> so it's my first time at a crab place, and I was telling Alta that I wanted to go a place where I got mallets. <laughs> so I got myself a trusty wooden mallet. It looks like there's some marks on here. So I'm gonna be able to smash my little crabby. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited. They even laid out a, a table mat. A nice little paper. So you can make a mat. mess. Yeah, exactly. So I'm stoked. Can I flip it around? It's also my first time having a little crab feast too. And I've been in Maryland for a year and a half now, so it's gonna be a fun time. Booyah. Booyah. Check out this aftermath, and I'm so hungry. Not a good thing. And I cut my Students shouldn't have to choose between college preparation and hands-on vocational learning, but at this high school, they don't. Is the manufacturer out of Europe, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, High-end uh, welding power sources. Uh, when I managed weld shops, these were these were the top-notch. And get your hands on the equipment, just so you guys can find out what else is out there. Uh, <laughs> It's their first year in the program, and we're well with the AccuPocket 150, which is a battery powered stick TIG welder. So, I got a question for all three of them. Um, maybe introduce your name or say what your name is and kind of what your plans are, maybe after high school. My name is Caitlin, and I plan on going into the National Guard, Air Force. Cool. My name's Ryan, and I'll do civil engineering in the Air Force or Army. Awesome. My name is Matthew, and I'm planning to become a steam fitter first. 602. Cool. Appreciate it. They got to test out Fronies for the first time, and hopefully, you guys continue to grow. What's up, everybody? We're here at North Point High School. Me and Alta once again. She's been with me all week, or she's been my chauffeur yeah. all week, right? Driving them all around Baltimore. Yeah. What are we doing today? We did a tech day with the high school students that are at this. We did junior class and sophomore class. We showed them some Fronius equipment and let them play around with it. And I think everybody had a really good time. Yeah, I think Talked so. Talked some stuff. A couple of them, it was their first time ever MIG welding, so. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, good. it's interesting because they do a three-year program, so it's not just junior and senior. It's sophomore, junior, senior, so they got a leg up, mm -hmm. and I'm jealous because I only had two years, they get three. Oh, what the I heck? had three years too. No way. Yeah. All right. That's BS. <laughs> that's BS. But anyways, that's what uh, we do. You know, Earl Beck set this up, our partner here locally. And you know, if you're subscribed to my channel, ask your welding instructor to have us come and we'll show you all the latest and greatest technology. All right, yep. off to the next one. So I made it to Earl Beck in Baltimore and uh, this is their main location. And I would say this is the mega training school, I would say. So I'm here with Don Hodges, and he's the main CWI, CWE for the training center here in uh, Baltimore. How long have you been with Earlback? 11 uh, years. 11 years with Earlback. Yep. So uh, as far as like uh, students, how do you fill the courses up here in Baltimore? How do we fill them up? We have really three different ways. Uh, our industrial clients uh, make up about 40% of our student body, and the other 60% comes from two different community colleges. Uh, Anne Arundel Community College and the Community College of Baltimore County here are both partnered with us. 
and it's a great partnership. What happens is a student would register at the college and the training would take place here. About oxy fuel welding and, and how many schools actually teach oxy fuel welding? Is that something you teach here at Rollback? We do. Uh, we, we recognize, A, nobody really does it anymore. Um, if you have a plug, there's typically a better way to weld. But we also recognize that the oxy fuel process, watching that puddle develop in slow motion, there's no other way to substitute that. So we still incorporate it into our program even though it's a fairly obsolete way of doing it. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, yep, puddle formation is huge. You Just recognize your eyes and, and see that puddle form. Uh, obviously, as a welder, if you don't recognize and see the puddle, then you're not ever going to do anything successful as far as welding. What type of classes do you offer here at Earl we, we offer everything that you can think of as simple as a welding basics class for example it's a class that's four hours on Saturday and it's for that person that wants to learn how to weld with that machine that they may have in their garage just been sitting in there for a while or if somebody wants to just get a little taste of it and decide whether or not they want to come back for more mm -hmm. it's a pretty successful program yeah I saw I saw an ad sitting on your uh tables out front where somebody buys a welder they get a free training course mm -hmm. and that's the basics course it's the four hour class it's a four hour course yep. on saturdays mm -hmm. or is it the weekends yep. once a month on saturdays four okay hours. yeah that's a pretty interesting value you don't see a lot of uh distribution out there in the field that provide training courses especially a four hour course when you're buying like a standard Tra training course. in general i mean that's one of the things that makes our company a little unique is is our engineering group and our testing and training area I notice you're an AWS credited school. Yes. What's the difference between a non and an AWS credited school? What What would be the purpose of uh, a training center doing that? American Welding Society um, essentially has a program where if you come to a facility like ours, an accredited test facility program, you take the test under those guidelines. We submit your application once you successfully pass uh, to the American Welding Society. American Warning Society reviews those documents and then places you in the national database of certified welders, issues you a card, and, and now that is a portable document that you can take from employer to employer, where, where under normal AWS rules, if you were to switch employers, you would literally have to take another test. So it's unique in the We're here at the service department here at Earlback and they have three full-time uh, repair technicians and look at the sea of equipment that they have in for repair and these are accounted for machines and then the equipment over here is equipment that's been serviced and they're just waiting on purchase orders so not only do you get CWI's training customer service but you get free repair technicians so if your machine does go down inside that warranty uh, period or after warranty, you know, you can take it here and they can fix it and get you up and running in no time. What you Down the Beltway around DC and I, I see a welding truck from a company that I recognize and I just pull out my cell phone, call the guy up, happens to be the guy in the truck that I'm following. I'm like, hey man, it's Andrew with Earlbeck. Are you on 495 right now? And he's like, yeah, where are you at? I said, I'm right behind you. Why don't you take this next exit and pull into the Home Depot with me? And uh, we pulled into Home Depot. I, I showed him the AccuPocket and uh, he, he stopped what he was doing, turned around, went, went to our store in Beltsville and, and picked one up. Wow, see that? See that dedication? I wish I could work that hard. Now if everybody could, that'd be cool. But no, that's awesome. That story I mean, I'm here with Bill from Quality Erectors uh, down in Upper Marlboro. You see this nice logo right here. But uh, Bill, what they do is they do mobile erection, but also they have a fabrication shop. So I had the chance to tour a shop and show the audience exactly what they do and talk with Bill about their daily work and people and their business. So, Bill, how long have you guys been in business? Uh, we started in 1986. I was uh, just in high school, but we started and we started off with one truck, and then we just grew from there. We just, uh, you know, we did nothing but work hard and mm -hmm. just kept growing and growing. And eventually, 
we, we run about 30 employees now, so and we stay pretty much busy year round. So. Mm -hmm. how, how many work trucks do you have currently right now? Uh, I think we got about 20 some trucks in our fleet. Wow. But, uh, you know, some of them are just personal vehicles riding back and forth to work, but pretty much the work trucks, we, we're running, I think, about 12. We're over here by uh, a standard uh, work truck from Quality Erectors. And I like the color scheme, but you can see a variety of tools that they have on the back here. You know, we do see the engine drive, which is the most common, you know, because you can just fill it up with gasoline and use all your power tools and weld from it. So it's a different category of equipment. But what else on the, the work truck do you use on a daily basis, like when you're going out to a job? Uh, you know, they got the basic tools. They got the grinders, the uh, um, hilties, you know, I say hilties, but just hammer drills, you know, putting in anchors. Um, you know, if they're doing any elevated work, they got their harnesses and stuff like that. And, Mm -hmm. keep that in there but they keep an assortment when we first started we did a lot of service work so you had to keep a lot of different tools on the truck mm -hmm. and yeah. you guys use plasma cutters as well or you stick to oxyacetylene uh usually oxyacetylene we do some plasma work um out, out in the field but primarily most of the plasma work we do is being in shop um, but in the field it's usually demo or, or whatever mm -hmm. um, and occasionally we'll do some mid workout to be taken from We do a lot of renovation work. Um, we do most of our work is government work, so we uh, we tend to uh, get what a lot of people in the industry call junk work. We do um, we do some new construction, but the government does a lot of renovation on old buildings. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in there and put mezzanine stairs and uh, uh, additions and stuff like that. It's usually field check and you know fast. So with doing mobile work obviously you need welding equipment as well absolutely so, so part of the reason why I'm here too is because you do have a, a couple Fronius products and I'm just curious like the uh, the AccuPocket 150s that you have currently how do you use those out in the field um typically they're um, <laughs> they're used all the time now I mean like I told you before and I told the salesman that uh, Biggest complaint was they didn't come out 15 years ago when I when I needed them. They are they're a lifesaver. Um, typically, we go into these uh, finished buildings and power is always an issue, so we have to rely on the electrician to get our welders hooked up. Sometimes power has to be pulled from several hundred feet away. Um, and working with the government, they don't want leads running through the hallways, so now we can just plug in the 110 and do these jobs and <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a time saver because before we'd have to go down and spend time drop off the big tails have them hook it up so it, it's a huge time saver and not having to rely on somebody else to get your job done mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it's a good piece. somebody wanted to reach out to call the erectors how can they get a hold of you oh we got the phone number it's right right there <laughs> see you here there's the phone number and I'm sure you guys got a website. I uh, know, actually, you know what? We've uh, started up. We've got a customer base. We work for a lot of the same GCs and customers. And to be honest with you, we um, uh, since '86, we've never really had do any advertising. We've just been word of mouth, and the people call us back. It's, they can get a hold of me, my brother, or father, the three owners, and hey. Let's see, that's awesome. See, word of mouth does work. You don't need marketing. You just need to be good. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I was always taught, if you're good, they'll find you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I appreciate your time. Thanks yep. for giving us a tour.